In today's video, I'm going to share how to make this mini size solid granny square and how to use the join as you go technique to put them together. This is a companion video for one where I share a project I'm working on this year called a mood blanket. I'll go ahead and add a link to that video here and at the end of the video. As you can imagine, working on a temperature or a mood blanket, creating 365 squares is going to produce a big project. So with that in mind, you want your squares to be as small as possible. The square that you see here is roughly two to two and a half inches with just two rounds. The yarn that you see here is a weight four and I'm using a four millimeter hook. For my personal project, I'm going to be working with a weight three and a four millimeter hook as well. To begin, create a magic circle, and then chain three to serve as your first double crochet. If you don't like doing magic rings or magic circles, you can do a chain four with a slip stitch and then do your chain three. Now we're going to create our first cluster. This chain three serves as the first double crochet in your cluster. A cluster is just three double crochets. So let's do two more. And there's your first granny cluster. Chain two, three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, Chain two, three more double crochets, and you should have by now four clusters. One, two, three, four. Let's do our last chain two. One, two. To complete the round, we're going to do a slip stitch into the top of the chain three, or you can even go over to the first visible stitch, which is that second double crochet there. That's what I'm going to do. I'm doing a slip stitch into there. And I do that because that slip stitch sits nicely on top of that first double crochet. To begin round two, we want to start in this first corner. So I'm going to slip stitch one, and then slip stitch into the space two, and as you can see, we still have three spaces to work into later. One, two, three. We're going to start our first corner for round two. So chain two or three, depending on the size that you like for your double crochets. Typically in the corners of a granny square, it's three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets for the clusters. But for a solid granny, instead we're going to do two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets for our corner. So this chain three serves as our first one. Let's do one more double crochet. Chain two to form a corner and then two double crochets into the same space. Great. And now we're going to do double crochets into the top of the previous cluster. Scoot your stitches over a little bit so that you don't miss out on the stitch that we have to go into. So double crochet. And then into the next two doubles. Do a double crochet. Double crochet. We're back to our next corner. So that's two double crochets. chain two, and two double crochets. Scoot your stitches over a little bit so we can get into our next stitch. We're doing double crochets into the tops of that previous cluster from the bottom round.
and just continue this all the way around back to two doubles chain two two doubles double crochets into the top of that previous cluster one two three We're at our final cluster. This is going to be a little tighter to get into because we did our slip stitches. So just take care with that. And here's your space for your final double crochet. You can add your slip stitch into the top of that chain three. I like to do an invisible join, so I'm going to show you how I do that. Before fastening off, I just snip the yarn and pull that yarn through. Grab a tapestry needle. Now to make this invisible join, just go into the front through both of those loops. And then in the back loop only, Pull your yarn through. And as you can see, it matches the rest of the stitches and virtually impossible to see where you're fastening off. Because we don't have the slip knot there, you do want to make sure that this isn't going to come out. So I take a little bit extra care here. I just go into a loop or two, finding my way down to a very meaty area of stitches. Let's go this way. And then when I get to that meaty area, I'll do my three passes. There's one, two, and three. I'm going to be showing you how to join your first four together. Now, if you're working on a temperature blanket or a mood blanket, you're probably going to want to work in strips instead of chunks of four. But I just want to show you how to handle all of the different intersections, because as you're working on your blanket, you will be coming across that. But I would again recommend if you're doing a mood blanket to work in strips. So we've completed block one. For the rest of your squares, you want to complete your very first round completely, and then you're going to join as you go. Okay, so go ahead and grab your first square that's finished completely, and now we're going to join into it. I'm in my corner, and I want to match it with the corresponding corner and join these together. So I'm going to start by doing the first half of the corner just as normal, chain three to serve as my first double crochet, and then do one more, for my second double. Now remember we were doing two chains in the corners and I'm still going to do my two chains, but I'm going to join in between it. So I'm going to chain one, and now I'm going to join to that corner before I do the chain two. Now there are two different ways that you can do the joining technique. One will give you this rope-like effect, and the other will give you more of a braid effect. Both are really pretty, but I found that the braid effect works a little bit more quickly, but it's definitely a personal preference. To get this looping effect, whenever you're joining to your square, you're going to remove the loop from your hook. You're going to go into the place that you want to join, and then you're going to pull your loop from behind over the top, and then continue working. For the braid effect, you'll leave the loop on your hook, and go into the top of your corner or the space you're working, and pull the yarn through to create a slip stitch. I'm just going to continue on with the braiding effect, but I will show you from time to time how to do the other one. So I've done a chain, 
my slip stitch join and now I'm going to do one more chain and that will give me my two chains. And now we need to complete our corner. To do that, first we need to do our double crochet And a tip here, or something to remember, is you're always going to do a join after you've done a double crochet. So I've just done a double crochet, and now I need to do another join to attach it. And we're going to go into the stitch right next to the corner space to join this one. So we've done one double crochet, we need to go back in to complete our corner. But now we need to join that other one into the next stitch. So going into the top, just pull through and create a slip stitch. And what you'll notice here is you've taken the two sides here from that corner and joined it to the two sides of this corner. And now it's time to do our double crochets into the top. Just like before, go in, create your double crochet, and now we need to attach it to the square above. You're just going to go in and pull it through to do the slip stitch, or if you want to do the rope, remove the hook from the loop, go in without it, and pull it through. And then you'll just continue on with your double crochet. You don't have to worry about doing any kind of slip stitching. For this technique, you're just creating kind of a loop to hold it in place. Let me show you with another one. We've just attached, so we're going to do a double crochet. If I want to do the loop effect, I just remove from my hook, go in, and then pull that loop through the back, and then continue on. Now, if you notice, I'm already at a corner here. And don't be in a panic if you see that you're already at a corner and you still have all this space up above you. This is what you want to see. You want to see two double crochets available to work into. If you see that, then you know you're on track because those two are for that corner and you're going to be building into this corner. So we're on track, so we're going to do our double crochet. Join. Let's do the rope way again, just so you are sure how to do that. Remove from your hook, go in, and pull the yarn through. And then in the same spot, create your second double crochet for your corner. And we have one stitch left to join to. Pull your yarn through to join. So you should have something that looks like this. Now I know it looks a little bit weird because I showed you the two different ways to join, but from here on out I'll probably stick to just one. But what you want to focus on here is that you've joined the seven from the bottom to the seven on top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're good to go. And now we're ready to join our corner. And just like before, we're just going to do a chain one. Join, chain one, and then complete the other side of your corner like you normally would. And then you'll just complete the rest of your square and that's all there is to just joining the one side. Now, if you're working on a temperature blanket or the mood blanket, this is probably all you're going to need to do for the first um, several days. But at some point, you'll definitely need to know how to do all the different sides. So we'll go ahead and do that next. So let's just imagine that you've been working in strips, you've been joining just one side only for several days, and now you want to start joining those strips together. I would recommend that you take the finished strip and just move it to the top and continue on with the right side here on the corner. Again, I like to join as soon as possible, so I'm going to slip stitch my way over here to get ready to join. One, 
two, three for my first double, and then do another double crochet for that side of the corner, and now I'm ready. I'm going to do a chain one, and now I'm going to join, and I'm just going to do the braid effect, which means I'm just going to go through the top, pull the yarn through, and create a slip stitch join, and then chain one. I've connected, and now I can do my first double crochet. So I'm going back into the same space, and I need to join to the top. So I'm going in, joining, and then doing a double crochet back into the corner space. And then I have to go above, and join, and now I've completed that corner and I've attached to the corner above. And now we're ready to move on. So we're going to do our double crochet into the next stitch. Remember that one, it's kind of hidden under those stitches. Don't miss it. Going up above, attach it. Double crochet into the next one. Attach it to the space above. Okay. Double crochet into the next one. Attach it to the space above. And at this point, we're at our corner, so we should see two double crochets that we still need to work into. If we see that, we know we're on track. So double crochet into that corner, attach it. We have another one. Number two double crochet for that side corner, and attach it. Just double check, you've got seven attached. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Like before, we have two chains that we can work with, and what I like to do is do a crisscross join. So I'm going to attach this square to this square, and later the square that we make here will go to the one across. So just like before, we're just going to do our chain one, go across, Join, just like so. If you're doing the underhanded join where you're removing the loop from your hook, then you'll do a chain one, remove from the hook, go into it, pull the yarn through, just like that, and then do your chain one, and then continue on. And now I'm done. No more attaching. I'm just going to continue on all the way around as normal. There's my corner completed. Two, chain two, and then two. And now I'm going to do the rest of the square just as normal. Okay, great, so that's the third one, and now you have your fourth one. So again, if you're working in strips, just imagine that this is a big strip that you've worked on already, and it's above you, and you've just started your row two, or whichever row that you're working on currently, and you've attached that first square. Now you're going to work on the next one, and then just continue building all the way across. So here we go, we're just going to move things around to make it easy to work into. And I'm just going to do my first corner or side of that corner, chain one, going in, join, chain one, and now I'm ready to do my other side, so I'm going to do my double crochet, and now I'm going to join into that first double crochet above me, Okay, double crochet into the same space. Okay. 
And now add a join into that next stitch. And there I've just joined the corner to the corresponding corner above. Going back down, now we're going to start doing our doubles on the side. And I'm just going to fast forward through this because I think you have a pretty good idea of how to do this now. I'm at the corner, so I need to do my double crochet into that corner. We're just doing the first half of that corner like we normally would be. Going in. Last space. And now it's time for me to do the joining. So we're just going to do the same thing again. We're just going to join to the corresponding corner. When I did the green to the pink, I went caddy corner, and I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to go caddy corner, doing a crisscross to join. So chain one. Going across, pulling the yarn through, there's my join, and then chain one. We're just going to do our first double crochet into the space. Okay, now you're going to start attaching. So going above, slip stitch. I've done one side of that corner, so now I need to complete it. And then attach to the one above. And you've completed and joined the two corners together. One, two, one, two. And now you can continue doing the joining as you normally were. Attach. Double crochet. Attach. Double crochet. Attach. And we're at our next corner. We want to see two remaining stitches to work into above us. We're on track because there they are. We're good to go. So we'll go into our corner. Attach. Go into our corner. Attach. If you're working on a side, all you're going to do is you're going to do a chain one, single slip stitch in there, and then chain one, and then continue on with your corner working around the side. But let's say, for example, that you've done your strip, and you probably have another one here that you need to work into. So you're just going to behave as if you're doing the intersection again. Instead of joining in here, you're just going to go crisscross, chain one, join, chain one, going back into your corner, and then continuing on. And then continue on with that corner. And you're good to go. You're just back to your normal routine. If you're interested in working on this project, I'll go ahead and add a link here so you can check out the mood blanket that I'm going to be working on this year. All the details about that are also in the description box below the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.